Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host, Evan Teague, and with me, like always, is Noah Bailey. So, I have not seen Inside Out yet. Have you seen Inside Out 2 yet? No, I haven't. Not yet. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't plan on seeing it until I think two weekends from now. Um, just scheduling conflicts with my, with my brother who we're planning on seeing it with. Um, but... Apparently, uh, us not seeing it was the uh, apparently the exception because Inside Out Two made two hundred and ninety five million dollars this opening weekend. Opening weekend? Yes. Yep. I mean, it really? The, this stati- these statistics are going to absolutely blow your mind. It is the biggest ever Pixar animated movie opening. Bigger than Incredibles 2, somehow. Oh. <laughs> bigger than Finding Dory, bigger than any Toy Story. The biggest ever animated movie opening that's not Lion King, though that's, you know, its own thing. <laughs> the single biggest ever animated movie opening weekend. Ever? Ever. Bigger than any Minions movie, bigger than any Disney movie, bigger than any DreamWorks, a, 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 anything. Inside Out 2 is the biggest. Are Inside you serious? I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple things. One, I want to go on record and say this was a great idea. They should have done like 10 years ago. Well, not 10 yeah. years ago, but you know what I mean, like five plus years ago. Yeah. Second of all, that's really good. <laughs> like, that's great. I did not expect that at all. Yeah. Like, I. I wasn't writing off the movie, but I, like, the first movie did, I think, 800 million. Like, I wasn't expecting this movie to have that level of audience. Like, I I didn't feel like it had that, like, I didn't feel it had, you know, Incredibles or Toy Story or Finding Nemo levels of fervor from fans, but apparently it does. I mean, it is a really good movie, and I mean, the first one was really good. I love the premise, the idea. It's well animated. It visually looks really good, so I assume this is more of the same, if not better. I think the idea of Riley being like, you know, they're kind of doing the second one when she's kind of doing that puberty, teenage age is like ideal, so I think that's a really smart idea. So... In theory, it makes sense, but yeah, apparently this is just been blasted off really good. Mm -hmm. It also is surprising because Disney has, like, I was under the impression that Disney had completely watered down, you know, the ability for Pixar movies to do well, period, given how well, you know, given how they've been doing, uh, you know, about uh, Luca and and, uh, Soul and Turning Red on Disney Plus exclusively. And then their last theatrical one was Lightyear, which was terrible. <laughs> so I just assume that people just, you know, would just wait until it released on on Disney Plus, like you know, like how they watched the previous several actually really good Pixar movies. But and even yeah. Elemental, like released last year, it did it ended up doing pretty well, but it wasn't like all in out success. You know, I think it did like 500 total after like mm-hmm. after having been out for several weeks. Um cuz that's one of those movies that like that studios need especially in this day and age, studios really need to understand that just because the movie isn't you know, doesn't blow the box office out of the water the first weekend, it can be successful over time. Like Elemental was deemed a failure because it, you know, it definitely didn't meet expectations opening weekend, but over time, it I think it doubled its production budget over time. So not like mm. you know, you know, for a new IP, it's a pretty moderate success at least. This movie, <laughs> I even though I fully expected just general sentiment for Pixar to be to be lower than the uh, oh, apparently Inside Out's immune to that. I mean, I mean, it's one of those things where you're just kind of like, I, I mean, I thought it'd be good, but I mean, dang. Like. <laughs> yeah. And because this movie made $295 million, it is 
already the fifth highest grossing movie of the year. Oh, that didn't take long. Mm -hmm. Do you want to guess the other four? Um, Dune. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Um, Yeah, it's all that kind of... Oh, um... I saw this movie. What am I... I'm I'm blanking on literally every movie that's coming out this year somehow. I don't know why. Why do I... I've seen a, I've seen at least a couple movies this year, haven't I? What am I? I'm forgetting a bunch of. What am I forgetting? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. So, Wait, what? Bottom up. Technically, it, so technically, uh, the new Ghostbusters movie I think made 296 million, but I forgot that it even came out. Assume. That inside has already. Yeah, no, it's, 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 yeah, it's already. It probably um, has by the time we start this conversation. Yeah. Uh, so inside out to two hundred ninety-five million. Number four okay. is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes at three hundred seventy-four million. Oh, I forgot about that. Number three is Kung Fu Panda four, five hundred forty-five million. Good. Which I think for the budget that movie had, that's about right. Like it being the the second lowest uh as far as uh box office goes i think the first kung fu panda is like right below it and then four and then three then two so that's i'm sure they're happy with 545 on a reduced budget um number two is godzilla x kong the new empire at 565 million and then dune part two at 711 Okay, I don't feel as bad I actually didn't end up going seeing any of those movies. I realize I haven't really gone to the movies since Dune came out, which is weird. Yeah. For me, usually. I'm at the movies a lot. Right? I like, meant to see Godzilla, and I just didn't I kind of forgot. I, just, I think I just forgot. I was, same with Kung Fu Panda. Like, I love those movies, so I don't know why. I just, for some reason, I don't know if I just got busy or what, but I just kind of forgot. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't get into the Planet of the Apes until like it was already in theaters, and then it just it's kind mm-hmm. of got away from me. Uh, which they're good movies, and I want to see it eventually. And it's just yeah, at this point, I'm probably not going to be in theaters, but hopefully, hopefully that's enough for the franchise to continue. And it seems like it at least doubled its production budget. So, um, but yeah, uh, two hundred ninety five million worldwide in three days. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> Insane. I mean, that, for any movie, that's crazy. Mm. Uh, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good bet to think that it's it's gonna pass Dune, assuming it stays on a similar trajectory. That movies that make this much, you know, continue on. Um, and there's not really gonna be much competition until Despicable Me comes out in like two weeks, but. I don't know if that movie is going to have the same is going to is going to do as well as as a, you know, just Minions movie, which is ironic, <laughs> but that's like that's just kind of how it's like that to go where like the side characters become so much more popular that the original just doesn't yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean they like they like eat the Minions up overseas, I know for sure, but like Oh yeah. I mean, but I feel like it would still work. I mean, it's not like they're not going to be in it. And like, I mean, personally, yeah, I think the actual Despicable Me movies are significantly better than the Minion stuff. But I mean, financially, we'll see. But yeah, I don't know because like it's going to be what because like Despicable Me four and then Deadpool comes out, Mm -hmm. and then uh, but that's not. I mean, that's probably not even really the same demographic. I mean, kind of, but not really. So. I, mean, I don't know. That's good. I mean, like the 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 Venn diagram is people who like Disney stuff would be Marvel and Pixar. That's yeah, true. You know, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Especially like I don't know. Nowadays, parents be taking their kids to some violent stuff because, like, I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember. What, I think it was. I think it was one of the Demon Slayer movies, and like, I'm just in there, and there's like a six year old, like, right down the road. I'm like. <laughs> this is way too violent for this kid. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
I'm like, that guy just got ripped in half. Like, there's no way you're bringing your kid to this. But, yep. uh, so, yeah, maybe, yeah, I mean, if it, yeah, I guess yeah. we're at that point where I guess, yeah, it just doesn't really matter, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll have more to say about the actual movie in a couple of weeks when I, when I actually see it, but I'm sure Disney is very happy with those results, especially with how Wish did back in November, which mm-hmm. the has already outgrossed that movie. <laughs> yeah. That actually was, was a pretty good movie, though. I still haven't seen it. I want to yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 I only saw it because a friend recommended it, but I actually, that movie could have done pretty well, given the right. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it needed a different... I don't know. Maybe. This movie has already done more than the Marvels did, again, back in November. Like, so, people were kind of, you know, down on you know, the the box office in general, let alone Disney at the box office, but this clearly shows that people still like Disney, still like Pixar, still like animated stuff, so. That's well, good. This probably will cement Dis, uh, Pixar's new vision of wanting to basically just do sequels from now on, which... Ugh. Like, I get it. This movie made a lot of money, and it is a good sequel. But that's the thing. They have to be good sequels. That's the problem with Lightyear, that it is a terrible, <laughs> terrible movie. I, mean, know, I don't even count that as a sequel. That's like... It's like a inspired... It's like its own thing, lightly inspired. Yeah. Because, like, yes, on paper, the idea of, oh, making a movie about the thing that this is... This toy's about sounds good, but, but it's, hey, it's you know, it just... Though. It literally is not it's that not, movie. It can't be that movie. <laughs> and it also is just not, it also just not well written. So, I mean, that also doesn't help, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll keep tracking this movie to see how long it takes to pass up Dune, because I'm sure it'll be before Deadpool. I just have a feeling it'll be before Deadpool comes out with that it passes 700 yeah, or something. Sure. Speaking of Deadpool, um, I'm still gonna, you know, still going to stay on my on my vision of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine being the highest grossing movie of the year. Like, even if yes. Inside Out 2 does pass a billion, which is maybe possible. Deadpool and Wolverine is currently tracking to make over two hundred million in its domestic opening weekend, not total, just here in America. Would there potentially be any overseas hangups with that? I think it's probably not opening in China because a lot of R-rated movies don't. But um, outside of that, I don't think and and. Marvel movies have been successful before without China, like with uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. So it's very possible that like 200 million here and then double that overseas is, is, is possible. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if that, if, if that happens, but uh, I, I mean, it could be even more than that. <laughs> like, I mean, it's definitely going to be huge. I mean, this is, I mean, one, you know, a Deadpool movie is just another one's just going to be. We're excited for it. Plus, this one's got Hugh Jackman Wolverine, which is enormous. Plus, yes. there's the MC link now, which could potentially, who knows what might be in this movie. So, I mean, the hype is definitely real. I've been seeing a lot of people kind of complaining that this, the trailers haven't really shown a lot of the movie. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want it. To at all, I don't want this to be one of those movies where you know everything going in. Like, uh, as cool as No Way Home was, the fact that you know set leaks and scripts and stuff did get leaked beforehand, make you already know that the other Spider Men were going to be in it. Like that, it didn't take away from the enjoyment, but I think the level of excitement would have been higher had I not known that at all. You know? Yeah, I mean. I know they didn't like officially be like, oh yeah, like for sure or the other Spider Man, but like you kind of knew. But it was also one of those things where it was like, I mean, 
it's still exciting either way. <laughs> like, yeah. There was no like there was no way to like undersell the hype for that. Like that was gonna be the craziest thing ever. It still is like the coolest thing ever. So like yeah. Absolutely. And with this, I think too, like I know that like I kind of look at it when I'm like the less they're showing me, the more excited I am. So it feels like oh, yeah. it's one of those things where, like, if we show you anything, then it's going to spoil everything. And I, I love that because I mean, this I seems like my surprise. If everything we've seen so far is just from like the first third or so, and then jumping yeah. through that portal is going into the second act, and then craziness from there. You know? oh, absolutely, you know, it's going to be crazy. There's going to be. Crazy amount of cameos for sure. I mean, because it's Deadpool, so why not? And it's gonna be like, it's just gonna be. And like the thing is, they're like they know what they know what we want. Like that's the thing. Like they know what they're doing. They know exactly what's gonna make us happy. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, like this is. I almost guarantee this is gonna be more or less a celebration of all the entire Fox X Men era of movies. Um, on top of this being a very solid Deadpool movie and Wolverine movie, like I just, I have very, very high hopes for it. Um, unless the reviews are just absolute, you know, just, just crap all over the movie. You know, I, I think it's going to be very successful. Yeah, no, it's, there's little chance that it's not awesome, but I mean, financially too, I think it's going to absolutely do amazing. Right. Moving on to one more Marvel thing. Um, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, that animated Spider-Man show that was originally going to be set, like, set in the MCU before Homecoming, but then they decided to kind of spin us off into its own thing, which I think is the correct decision. Uh, mm-hmm. That is premiering on November 2nd. Nice! Yeah. Was that a Friday? What was that? Or Wednesday. It's a Saturday. Wednesday after what? Wild. Yeah. November 2nd? Saturday. Maybe it's supposed to be 12. Hang on, let me look. Maybe it's supposed to be 12. Um, he said what? <laughs> that doesn't make... Although, I mean, <laughs> they should do that, because Saturday morning cartoons totally should come back. Oh, um, man. What memories? No. Mid series, okay. And it's it's come on. No, streaming on November second. That's wild. Well, all right then. Saturday morning cartoons are back. <laughs> huh. I'm here. It's trying to be Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that that's good. Yeah. Um, I hope this show is good because we haven't had a good Spider-Man show in fourteen years. Ten years. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not say it's been a while. It's like spectacular ended in two thousand nine, and then Ultimate. Oh was, my God! Wait, really? Yeah, I think it started in 08, ended in 09. Am I that old? Yeah, because I hadn't even moved it. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah, that is... Wow, we're getting old. And Ultimate is not... It's not the worst, but it's... It's just... There's something off about it. Like, I tried... I watched about 10 episodes of it. I'm like... There's just something off of it. I can't really put my finger on it. I just know it's not very... I know it's just not living up to as good as it should be. It's kind of annoying to watch, honestly. It kind of has the Teen Titans Go effect where it's like, I don't necessarily hate it for what it is. I hate it more for what the reason that it exists, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, it only exists because Disney got the rights to Marvel and then... Right. So yeah. They made their own Spider Man in the week. This one, with this show was doing amazing, and they should have kept going, and then they can't. It's like, yeah. Um, and then 
Marvel's Spider-Man, which came out in 2017, is also very, very annoying. <laughs> I do not like anything about that show. The art style, I don't like characterization of Spider-Man. Just every, literally every single thing about that show is just not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so if this show is is decent, then it'll be the first decent Mar- Mar- uh, Spider-Man show since Spectacular. So, hopefully that's true. Hopefully, yeah. Um. And again, I, I really do think that it was the correct decision to have uh, to have it be its own thing, not really tied to anyone, you know, any one Spider-Man or whatever. Because, like, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> it was originally called Spider-Man Freshman Year, which I feel limits it a little bit. Just being, you know, Spider-Man said in high school, you know, like cartoon with Spider-Man said in high school again. Like that's, you know, I think that's fine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I think honestly, that's kind of what we've needed because I feel like tra- we haven't really had traditional Spider-Man in a hot minute outside of probably the video game. Because I mean, not that I don't like Tom Holland Spider-Man, but MCU Spider-Man was not has not really been the same kind of Spider-Man, especially with like this relationship with Iron Man and stuff like that. So. Hmm. Yeah, like that's why I like Homecoming so much is because it it does do that. Like obviously there is an Iron Man ness to it, but like mm-hmm. you know he is living in the Marvel universe, so like I feel like other characters should show up and should influence the story. Um, and even you know by the end he completely you know breaks away from Iron Man, and then because the Avengers has to happen, they gotta pull him back in, and then that mm-hmm. informs everything else. Um, but. Yes, by the time home, uh, No Way Home, it's like, it's definitely not, it definitely feels like a different Spider-Man than what who was in Homecoming, which I know, obviously, character arcs happen, but just, it, feel, it felt like we had something very special with Homecoming, and the other movies, I think, are very, very good. Obviously, No Way Home is fantastic. I like Far From Home more than most people, but, like, I do want the energy that Homecoming gave more than that, those Spider-Men. So, I think the show could do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Hope so, speaking of animated superhero shows, a Blue Beetle animated show is in the works and is apparently going to be a loose continuation from the movie. Okay. Okay, I like that loose continuation. I do like because again, it doesn't have to be, you know, we're not necessarily working with this if we don't have to. But at the mm-hmm. same time, we have some structure for a character who essentially had none outside of this movie, by most people's knowledge. So I think that's a yeah. good move. Yes, like that movie did not get enough credit when it came out. I think it just came at the absolute worst possible time that movie could have. Um, like, like it not only did it come out during essentially like the peak of you know general superhero fatigue, it came out after the Flash, which was absolute gutter trash, which was already billed as like you know resetting of the DC universe. So anything after it, people just it just will not care about it unless it's one of the big three. And because Blue Beetle is not one of the big three, <laughs> you know, like if Superman came out right after Flash, maybe it would stand a chance. Because of like, you know, this is, you know, the start of the new universe. Well, Blue Beetle's kind of in this own pocket dimension where it's like, are you part of the new universe? Are you a part of the old universe? Like you reference other characters, but that's that just because you're in, like, you're just in a DC universe. Will this stuff be relevant? Will it not, like, do I need to care about the Flash? Like I don't. You should, but like, <laughs> it's a very, very unfortunate time. Period. Um, but and like, also Warner Brothers, just, I feel didn't really have much. Didn't really support it, regardless, because originally just gonna be an HBO Max movie, and then somehow it got released to theaters, and I think more people should have seen it. <laughs> 
regardless yeah. this movie this show being like like taking at least inspiration from that movie probably having a lot of the same voice actors because that's something that james gunn really wants to emphasize is like anything that's animated at least could have the voice actors be the actors from those movies and i think that's i think that's cool yeah and i do like that honestly because like it kind of give one i think it kind of like gives you know like even when not real structure exists especially with a character like blue Beetle, it kind of gives a little bit of like okay we have a basis kind of you know so just right. to kind of give it some and also just like you know voice acting is always cool so giving that a little extra yeah. or something but yeah plus i think the guy that played blue beetle did a amazing job as that character and i want him to continue playing the character as long as james gunn will let him um and you know it's not like every you know it's not like the dc products that james gunn has put out have just been absolutely blockbusters like the suicide squad granted there were issues during you know with how it was released but like the suicide squad didn't break the box office yet you know yeah like it was still good enough for you know dc to give him the keys of the castle so so he's he's able to appreciate that even though this movie didn't you know didn't do very well at the box office it still has still has soul it still has you know characters and and actors that should continue into his universe in some capacity and i i appreciate that agreed That's probably a, a few years out, but it's good to know that that it's happening. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, you said you have seen episode three of Star Wars: The Accolade, right? Yes, I have. Okay. I have some thoughts about that episode. <laughs> so just i want to get this out of the way right up top first my issues with this episode are not the fact that they are anakin babies i do not care that it breaks the lore of star wars like they're space witches they could do that sure why not i don't really care it doesn't make anakin any less special just something the force can do like sure whatever um yeah <laughs> two, i am not at all bad at the at the at the lesbian couple that does not affect Mom, me i don't care yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> again like that's not the point anybody who walked out of this episode having those be the main complaints about this episode i feel <laughs> didn't watch it all the way through because unless you maybe you might help me be able to work through some of these complaints i had because me and my roommate both did not but we have my roommate both had very similar thoughts about this episode because you know episode one and two they emphasize that you know the uh, osha lost her sister and her entire family in this big fire and then it was like oh actually may started the fire so and now she's evil when she blames the jedi for it or whatever so we know for a fact going into this that the only like the only things we know about them are uh, Osha's fam Osha's family burned in a fire and the Jedi were involved somehow to the point where one of them the Padawan in this episode put himself into like a vegetative state pretty much for ten years because he felt regret for what he yeah. did in the past yet. We didn't see what they did if they did anything at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I that threw me off too. I thought they, were, I thought a lot worse was gonna happen before it got to that point. Because at first it looked like they were really gonna like like throw down. Like it was like it was about to go down, and that's when I was like, okay. And so now the, they got carried away and slaughtered them all. Okay, I see where this is going. But no. they didn't. I mean, it's a one. No, 
Yeah. Good. In, instead, the way it is shown in this episode, and obviously there is a chance this could get recontextualized in the future. I'm hoping <laughs> for that. I'll get to that in just a second. But like, as of what we saw in the episode, May took her little May, May, May took well actually first. <laughs> May's descent into darkness was very quick, very kind of forced. Or like, you're gonna go with the Jedi, then I'm gonna kill you. Like, uh, what? Yeah, right, no, literally. <laughs> like, she's like, all you're, like, you're tearing like, this family apart. I can't let you do this. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> like, what? You're eight, <laughs> and you're just gonna kill your twin sister. I'm like, whoa, okay, Azula. Like, what is that? That's not normal. Like. So she she takes her little her journal, lights it on fire, and then the door that's made of stone lights on fire. <laughs> They're burning the hallway, also made of made of stone. So then Osha climbs through this like maintenance tunnel, which had not been established before. That leads to a generator room, which had not been established before, and that generator room was already on fire and exploding for seemingly no reason. <laughs> In, like, two seconds, also. Yeah, the fire spread that fast, that intensely, and then May was I... also already in the room saying that her mom was already dead? <laughs> like, how? what happened? <laughs> Also, like, not that I, I mean, not because I like work for, you know, not because I'm used to doing like OSHA things at work, but I'm like, how is there no like fire safety anything in like the entire? I know it's Star Wars, it's a stupid book, but it's like there's no alarm, there's no like fire suppression. I mean, if it's that easy, first of all, any generator room should have that, but I'm like, if it's that easy to, if a child can start a fire that burns the whole place down in what? Four minutes tops. Uh -huh. Top. I mean, I mean, like that's just. I don't. I mean, that's you were asking for that. I mean, that's crazy. Like, how did the stone catch on fire? How did it travel that fast throughout the entire palace? Yeah. How did her parents die that quickly to asphyxiation? Because it's not like they had any, you know, laser holes or scorch marks. They were just on the ground dead. Like. <laughs> Yeah, and that was my thing too. It's like it's like I mean like nothing really fell on them until later. So it's like, why are you mm -hmm. on the ground? Why are you? I, I mean, I especially if like no one else, like I don't know. Maybe I don't remember. Like I don't remember like OSHA like coughing or anything. Because I don't think there was like smoker. I don't. I don't know. After like after the fact, they were all covered in soot. So I guess there was smoke, but, but like, yeah, they weren't. Yeah, in. Like and like I said, I honestly really, really hope that later we do get it recontextualized that the Jedi did did something, either set bombs or did something. I don't know exactly what, but like something had to have happened <laughs> to like have the fire ignite something that the Jedi yeah. did in order for maybe, maybe to blame them for it because she's clearly the one. Yeah, that, I don't know. Yeah, there's no way that made sense. I mean, and the thing, too, that doesn't make sense either is, like, they're magic. Like, how do you let a fire kill? Like, I don't, I mean, not like, not like everyone's a person to that, but I'm like, okay, you can literally, I mean, you used magic to make children. You're telling me you can't, like, stop a fire? Like, right? I, that feels extremely within your power based on what I've mm -hmm. seen. But apparently yeah. not. So yeah, I think there's and more to it. I hope so because the last thing May said to Osha was that this was all your fault. You're the reason my, you know, you're the reason our moms are dead. But like, what did Osha do <laughs> other than agree to Osha go to just... the Jedi, causing you to well, want to kill her? Like, that's not your, what <laughs> it's your fault, May. <laughs> I mean, and the weird thing too is like, okay, so going back to the jedi person so the jedi do the jedi thing and they're like oh someone has the force and they just kind of mm -hmm. show up see now i thought what was going to happen was they were just going to walk up take the kids start a giant fight and then everyone dies like that was like okay yeah i can blame the jedi for that but it was like 
they were very like, yeah, like if you want, we'll take them, but we're not just going to take. Which I was surprised. I thought they were just going to grab yeah. and run. But I mean, it seemed very, and like Osha wanted to go with them, like straight up. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like at that point, you can't really. I mean, you can't blame the Jedi. I mean, I guess you could, but like more blame Osha than blame the Jedi. They're just doing their job. I mean, yeah, like, it could be, like, literally any outside influence Osha would have been, you know, would have been at least curious about what's out there. Like, she was ready to be not yeah. care anymore. And that that's fine. But I just really don't, I don't understand why they would seemingly, like, brush past the only thing we knew that happened, and that was May setting the fire. And her parents dying in the fire, like you didn't show her parents that. And again, I hope they actually do show that later. They they easily could, but like this fire is like the catalyst for the entire show to happen, and they just it just happens, kind of like mm-hmm. more or less off screen. <laughs> yeah, and then she. I mean the important. Yeah, I mean, but during the important stuff, we're just looking at them you know, ventilator shaft or whatever, but I mean, maybe in a future episode, we'll kind of see the perspective of, like, maybe, cause like, maybe the other Jedi were, like, going to get, oh, well, it's like, I don't know, because the rest of the Jedi were kind of on or near the ship during the test, so I don't think they're doing anything else, so maybe the soul the, did know. show up suspiciously quickly once after the yeah. fight started, so, like, maybe the Jedi were already around doing something. Maybe the yeah, maybe they were, maybe they were coming to get her, and they were like, "No, you can't have her." And like, may, what I'm hoping is like they already started something, or maybe they already had a fire going, or something was going wrong already. So the fire was just kind of added on. But yeah, I don't know. It just seems really off, and it's one of those things where it's like. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for them all to be like, we know we did bad things. It's like, it doesn't sound like you did. It sounds like bad right. things just happened to happen where you were. So unless there's more right. context, especially for, like, the guy. Yeah, like the guy in the future just puts himself into this, like, forced coma, essentially. Mm. Which, like, I thought, because he, he was the one who got possessed for a second. So I thought that was yeah. going to be, like, what happened. It's like, you know, like, oh, he got, like, you know, magic messed up or something he had like that's his only way of like i don't know but not really <laughs> he seems to be fine after uh, him. yeah i mean that would have been cool though i'm not gonna lie but yeah yeah i mean the witch thing is interesting because they kind of have night sister vibes so like yeah. i feel like there's a lot you can do with that but like so far i feel like they're not doing anything with it and yeah i'm 100 percent all for you know other sex of of magic user like force user magic people yeah. and night sisters like that there's millions of planets out there other people surely yeah, sure. do this. that's yeah. fine um i do i do kind of feel like the the episode already kind of lost me earlier when um when uh the like the like leader witch lady mom person she was like doing that demonstration showing like the power of one that she pushed that one back the power of two and then it was like a little more of a struggle but she still pushed them back it's like with the power of many you can do anything you want but like the power of two didn't seem to be that good <laughs> like i don't really know what that was about i mean i mean at the end of the day the power i mean you can, you know, some people, even two or three, is not going to beat certain people. I mean, we've seen that, especially in Star Wars. But at the same time, I guess it's like trying, I guess it's an example. You know, because they're, they're kids, too. So it's like, you got to be simple with it, I guess. I, but, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, just, <laughs> the best analogy I can think of is it's if, as if Superman were talking to new Justice League recruits, and it's like, with just, you know, if you're just fighting one, if, you know, if you have a superpower, you're just fighting one opponent, you know, they they won't be able to, to stand up to you. But if you're fighting two people, they still won't be able to stand up for you. But, you know, at least be a little more taxing. And the two people he's fighting are like Wildcat and Huntress. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> wildcat. Don't do Wildcat. Don't do Wildcat. Like oh. 
like that demonstration like, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Especially with like the force or like force adjacent stuff, it's like it does not. You could have ten like novices; they're not going to beat a like master. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but. I guess it's more for a point. I mean, my whole thing with the whole, like, kids thing is, like, I get that they're trying to be, like, oh, they're so different, but it feels, like, so, like, I mean, pardon the pun, but, like, forced. It's, like, I mean, like, I get it, they're different, but, I mean, this is, like, over the top different. Like, one's a psychopath for no reason, and the other one's just not a psychopath. Yeah. It kind of just, like, Okay. They did a really bad job at at differentiating the twins throughout this episode. Like sometimes they had different clothes on, but a lot of times they had the same clothes on. But yes. they didn't really do anything. Like I think one of them had like orange highlights, and one of them had red highlights. But in the lighting, you could not tell the difference. <laughs> and if you're colorblind, you really can't tell the difference. I have no idea. Right. And even they even didn't say the names, but. But there's an entire scene, and like you can only really tell who's who by context clues. But there's an entire scene yeah. where like they're ta- they're the, the kids are like getting ready, and they're talking to each other about what's going to happen. And Osha, I assume it's Osha, she's writing in her in her journal. But you didn't know she had that journal before that moment, so you don't know that is Osha. You only understand from context clues because May scolded her for always running off. Which you assume that's what she was doing at the beginning. You have to do a lot of assumptions just to tell these two mm-hmm. girls apart. When it seems like a very important moment for these characters, that like you better know who's who right now. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I guess they make their personalities jarring enough that it works, but it's still kind of like they could have easily just like given one one wears this color, one wears that color. Or, you know, just, like, things they do with twins. Even in real life, people like, okay, if we don't, we dress these kids the same, we're not going to know who's who. We got to do something. Yeah. Like, or at least they could have, like, a different hairstyle. Like, something. Like, I get the idea is supposed to be, like, with the main plot. Like, oh, we didn't know this one was the twin or not. But at the same time, it's like, okay, this is, like, come on. like and I guess the same actress, but it's also, like, we got, like, this is getting... Well, a little taxing. I think, I think the 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 twin girls. I think they were different actresses. Like their faces, really? their facial structure looked a little different. I think, not exactly sure, but I thought they looked a little different. I'm pretty sure the the old like the the yeah. teenage twins are are I guess not teenage, you know, young adult twins are uh, the same actress. But I'm pretty sure that the young twins were different. Um, well, regardless. It, like you could argue that it's thematically relevant for them to look nearly identical because May kind of viewed them as one, like one entity, anyway, um, and that's kind of like what Osha was trying to break away from, which I get. But during conversations when they're ha- like during yeah during scenes when they're having those conversations, yes, it's thematically interesting for them to look alike. But also, I kind of need to know who is who in order to really, like, understand where each side is coming from, you know? I agree. Yeah. Oh, you're right. There are two twins, yeah. It's okay. Lauren, Lauren and Leah Brady. Yeah, they play the young twins. Okay, so that's okay. good. No. Cool. So they are technically different, but, you know. Right. And then, kind of going off of the... Part of the discussion I had, uh, we we had a uh, uh, last episode where I was talking about something about I can't even really put into words exactly what it is about the show that makes me feel this way, but just something about the lighting and the costuming and just how things are blocked. It just feels less. Off. It feels off. I can't really put it into words exactly what like less real, less engaging. Just something about it. It just doesn't. Just doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. Not as not as Star Warsy as you'd like it to be. Yeah. Like I'm I'm gonna keep watching, mostly just in hopes that something happens to to reframe this to something a little more um, engaging. But I also just kind of feel like this flashback was a 
was oddly placed in the show because I feel like considering episode two ended with very briefly introducing the Wookiee Jedi and then you flash back, I feel like fully introducing all four of the Jedi first and then flashing back maybe would have been the best way to do it. Yeah, or like, or flashing, I mean... Yeah, I mean, the pacing for this story so far, I know we haven't seen it all yet, but I feel like the pacing for the story so far has just been off. Because like I said last night, I feel like the whole twin reveal probably should have waited. Because I feel like, because like, if it had, like, I feel like it should have been halfway. I feel like for most of the story, we should have been like, no, she did it. Why is she so adamant she didn't do it? What's going on? And then it's discovered she has a twin. No, like, you know what I mean? Like, like that. It's like that's a good twist time. I feel like that needs to be like a midway twist. Not like I get you want your first episode like hanger, but it's like the fact that you already used your best card immediately kind of makes the rest of the story kind of feel like a formality. Because now it's not really interesting. It's kind of like okay, that's the good sister. That's the bad sister. Kill her, and she can figure it out. And that's kind of it. And it's just like also like. Yeah, the flashback was just weird because it's just like they made this huge deal about you Jedi. I can't believe you did this to me. And then like the Jedi all seemed like, hey, yeah, we messed up, but you know. And then like you look at the flashback, you're like, no, they didn't. They didn't really do anything. They kind of just happened to be there. I mean, they didn't really do like. And I guess like we said, hopefully more will like. Be revealed, but it feels like they're just gonna go back to the present, and then with this quote new context, we're supposed to like feel differently. But I doubt I will. I'll probably feel even more on their side. Like, yeah, they didn't really do anything, but like the fact that they just kind of the fact that she's already killed two of them feels very like what it feels kind of lame. So I'm like, I want a real, I want like, more information about. May now, I feel like. So if they kind of have an episode with her backstory, I feel like they should have done they should do that next because I I want to know how you have any ability to like do anything. Because you didn't get any training as far as we know. So Right. I I I almost kind of wish two things. One, I kind of wish that they they went about the flashbacks in a similar way that Book of Boba Fett did, where every episode you saw like a little piece of it. Mm-hmm. That way, by the time you got to the fire, you know, scene, it kind of had like a bigger moment to it. But also, it would have been kind of cool to to kind of have it where, similar to um, in the Last Jedi, where uh, you know Luke and and uh, and Kylo Ren had like different memories of of Luke attacking him. Like it would have been kind of cool to like first hear it from Osha's perspective, then see it from May's perspective, then have Soul be like, well actually this thing also happened to kind of recontextualize. So I think that right. would have been interesting. Instead right now yeah. we like we and again they might do that. They very well might do that. But the fact that this whole episode was flashback leads me to believe that we're not going to get much more flashback after this. So, also, this is one. This is an interesting flashback because it's almost like it's almost like not from anyone's perspective. Like it's kind of from Osha's perspective, but not really because we see right. parts that Osha wasn't there for. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like whose flashback is it, or is it just for the audience? Because at this point, it feels I mean, more just like context, which is like yeah. not perfect. But I mean. I don't know, like, it's mostly about OSHA, like, the most things, but it's also, like, you know, there's conversations had that OSHA wasn't there for, so it's kind of like, okay, like, is this just right. information dumping? What are we What are we doing? I also kind of wonder, since, they're, since they specifically didn't really, you know, keep the twins, twins a secret after episode one, I almost kind of feel like this episode maybe would have been better as the first episode and like kind of frame it to build up the mystery of what happened during the fire a little more so that way like as you're watching it you're like you know you're not sure like, exactly what happened yeah i do yeah i kind of like that idea kind of like 
Oh, I can't think of a good example of how that's done. But like, yeah, I've seen the app where it's like you get the gist of what happened, and as every episode goes, and how as you introduce new characters, their context is added and their understanding um, is added. And by the end of it, I don't know if you've seen it, but only murder, uh, only murders in the building. Um, was mm, that yeah, like uh, C. Martin Martin Short. That every season, like starts with a murder that has happened and then like you know they try to solve it so like every episode like has like new context new characters that like inform one like a, so like yeah like an elaborate whodunit essentially yeah, yeah. exactly and honestly I think, I think that's what this would mean yeah yeah i agree completely and again i do you imagine I just, a star wars story that would be like who killed Master or whatever. And then it's just like, all right, you've got the Padawan, you've got the, like, smuggler, you've got the ship driver, the butler, like, you know what I mean? And then there's a mm-hmm. giant who done it, and then it's like, it was the astromech, and everyone flips out. Yeah. Like, hey, hey, Star Wars, if you, if, you know, I know Ryan Johnson is off doing his knife out, Knives Out movies, which are very, very good, but, like, if he wants to make another Star Wars, have him do a Who Done It Star Wars. That'd be that'd be something. Who Done It Star Wars does sound awesome. <laughs> because oh, I'm like, oh, no. just be be the detective. <laughs> It'd be amazing. But yeah, I don't know. I just love. I don't know. I do love a good Who Done, especially well written. Mm-hmm. I feel like that they could have done similar thing with this, maybe. But yeah. also, it's interesting too because like. You want to learn more about what's happening, but it's like it feels like the more we're given, the less we're like convinced of anyone's reaction, really. Mm-hmm. Like, I get OSHA sad because she lost her family, but it's also like, why does I don't know? Like, I still go back, like, the Jedi, I don't know, there has to be something missing because, like, the Jedi being remorseful just doesn't make any sense, like, mm-hmm. especially like in the like. The way the Jedi usually are, something horrible happens. Like, don't get me wrong, they're not going to be like sucks to suck, but they kind of do. Like, right? I don't know, because I always think about like, you know, like it's just like, like I know it's different. It's like, and he, like, and yes, it's a different era from the Jedi, but also at the same time, they, you know, when they were talking about, oh, you know, we need to make a swift decision for political. I'm like, oh, that sounds like something Mace Windu would say. So, like, it's not that far off culturally, but. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, maybe the episode, you know, that came out today shed some new light on it. I, I don't know. Um, but it's also one of those things where, like, I went into the show really wanting to like it. Mostly, you know, for two reasons. One, I like Star Wars. I want a good Star Wars thing. And also just to spite the people who hate it for very arbitrary and dumb reasons. But, like, Mm-hmm. By this third episode, like I have overall negative thoughts about it, <laughs> but not for the reason they do. <laughs> I wish I had positive thoughts about it, but I just I'm not loving it so far. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna continue to check it out, and I am gonna continue to watch it. But yeah, I definitely think it's could be a lot better so far. I mean, it's not terrible, but I'm not. I'm gonna keep watching it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to our last topic. Um, this is something that you suggested uh, a couple of weeks back that I I thought would be a very fun uh, thing to do. Uh, All right. We're gonna try to determine what the Mount Rushmore of superpowers would be, and not oh, just yes. like you know flight, super strength, what like no individual like, like superhero power like superman yes. flight etc yes i like that yeah i get because again it's the specific thing and it has to have like yeah from somebody else which i think is great and it's the iconicness too it's like mm-hmm. it's hard because although you want to think like oh what's the best power it's not really the best it's like okay what's the superpower power when people think of oh i want this power to be like x person right like i have my four but i want, I want to hear what your where your head's at okay 
Okay, so we have to start with Superman's flight because I mean that's yes. If you like, if I, I'm thinking Family Feud, we surveyed 100 people. What superpower do you want? Flight. Everyone wants flight until they actually try, and then like, oh, flight actually sucks. But whatever. <laughs> so yeah, Superman's flight for sure. Also, Spider Man Spider Sense. I feel like is yeah. super iconic and just mm-hmm. extremely useful. I would think. So that's another big one. Now mm-hmm. uh, it gets more interesting. I need to think about this because my first thought is like. Flash is super speed. I feel like that's, that's pretty common. Where my head went yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that I'd probably put that on there. And then I want to say like Hulk strength, but then I think, well, my people fourth. probably don't want that's, that's my See, Well, that's my thing. Yeah. The, and the, right. And the, but the reason I hesitate with Hulk strength is because although the actual strength is awesome, people don't want to turn green and giant and uncontrollable and everything right. in that. So that's kind of a double-edged sword with that. But I still feel like it is the most iconic version of super strength. Outside of absolutely, absolutely. Superman, but I'm not going to double Superman, down. but he's right. He's already on it. So yeah, I would. But I agree. I think. Yeah. I think too, because Superman kind of does everything, including strength. But also, I think flight's more iconic. Because when you think of Superman, Superman's always you know he's always flying. You know, so yeah. Um. Yeah. Outside of those four, which I do think is my four also, mm-hmm. I want to, I think some type of like telekinesis is also, or like mind power. Pretty and like, nice. my, not, my, yeah, that was what I was going to think. Because like everyone wants to, thinks they want to read minds. And then you, until you read legal mind, they realize you don't want to know what people are thinking. Yeah. But yeah. I think that probably be one I would switch out potentially with Hulk strength, mm-hmm. just because I think that's a really common one people yeah. would want to do. And then Sick with X Men, we got Cyclops with laser vision. Yeah, true. Laser vision is pretty common. Again, that's another one that I feel like also gets kind of looped in because Superman's heat vision also feels like would be the superior version one because you can actually control it. And two because. I mean, no, nah, mostly just one. Plus, I feel like just, I mean, Cyclops is kind of character. Super no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that's a good point. I think probably, I mean, what do you think about Wolverine Claws? I mean, I feel like that's pretty. Yeah, that's. Here's the thing about Wolverine, though. Like, yes, he does have the claws, but that's not his main power. His main power I mean, is generation. No, he... <laughs> agreed, agreed. He definitely has. I mean, it's not necessarily his like, you know, his best power. But then again, you could argue Superman's isn't flight either. So yeah, I guess it's kind of like what's the most he's most known for. I guess because mm-hmm. like, Cause I, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean let me let me rewind just a bit. Like, I, he's called yeah. Wolverine because he has those claws. Yes, but like, or, I feel he would be just as effective as a fighter. With the you know, with the same mindset as you know as he does if he didn't have the claws but instead like had had a knife because <laughs> he does have the regeneration I mean, and also the regeneration yeah. makes it so that the the you know even though it does hurt every time he uses it he, he gets over it because it just heals. Um, yeah, I mean, so. and assuming he would still have like the antimant- animantium, I believe I said mm-hmm. that right, bone structure. Yeah, he probably would still be just about the same. But I mean. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Wolverine has a lot of abilities that make him OP, essentially. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but so does... I mean, you can say the same thing about Hulk, too. I mean, yeah, like, his strength's yeah. elite, but also basically can't die. So... Yeah. Um, anything, what else is, like... like I, maybe... Iconic superheroes. I mean, I mean, those are the big ones for sure. I mean, I'm trying to think, maybe like instead of like Professor X, maybe more Jane Gray, because I feel like people also want mm-hmm. the like actual telekinesis along yeah. with like reading minds. So probably mm-hmm. that. Maybe be a little more, but then yeah. again, Jean Grey. I don't think anyone thinks Jean when they think telepathy. But here's here's the 
I, I like where your head is, but here's the thing. I feel like the purpose of this exercise is to pick an individual power, not Agreed. a set of powers. Otherwise, it would, like, it's right. not Superman as a character. It's his flight. It's Agreed, X's, yes. You know, his right. mind reading. Right, it's not just, just because you get two good abilities and you get both for the category. Yeah. True. I agree that I think yeah. Jean Grey uses both more effectively. Mostly because Professor X, is by popular belief, doesn't actually have telekinesis. Um, or telepathy. To whichever telekinesis. The one that can only eat okay. stuff. Kinesis <laughs> is moving things. Yeah. Telepathy is the yeah. mind reading slash yeah. mental suggestions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there any other, like, just like... I, I don't know. I mean, well... Maybe like shape shifting with either Martian Manhunter or Mystique, but like Maybe, I guess yeah. I feel like it's one of those powers you don't think of a person. You just like shape shifting. I can't because right. it's not like it doesn't fit the parameters, kind of like you were saying earlier. But it's just a popular power people would want. Mm -hmm. But I think those I think the ones we initially listed are the best for just because I think they're when you think of the, these powers. These are the first things that come to your mind. Because I mean, even like, especially with Superman, like all the Superman parodies, they're all, you know, Omni Man, Homeland, like all, like they're always, you know, they're known for their flying and this. And yes, they have the other powers for the most part too, but like, you know, like for, I think Homeland is a good example because he has the three main powers that you think of when you think of Superman super strong, can fly, heat vision. Like yeah. that's, what most people think of when you think of Superman. Granted, he probably doesn't, I don't know Homeland Super Bowl, but I assume he doesn't have like super breath or like. Not. Does he have. Not really. He has this like sonic shout that you like shout really loud and burst people's eardrums. He doesn't okay. really do it in the show ever, but he, in the comics he did. Um, okay. But yeah, his, in the, at least in the show, his main thing are, you know, invulnerability, strength, flight. Laser vision. He can like fly really fast, but he just, like, can't run fast as far as I can tell. Okay, so he does. So he does have. Yeah, I guess super speed makes sense. He loves to do that. That probably goes into his flight. So he is invulnerable too, like Superman. He's really hard to kill. Yeah, that's kind of the whole. Okay. Plot of the it, show is awesome. trying to take yeah. him out. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I guess I feel like that is one too, like invulnerability. Yeah. Like it, it is it invulnerability like Superman or or do you feel like it's more iconic to have something like Colossus where you kill yourself in a you know in, a, in metal? Yeah, or like I don't know, kind of more like this, like your body just comes unbreakable essentially, kind of like a you know Superman Luke Cage kind of thing, where it's just kind of like yeah, bullets just kind of don't work, right? Yeah, but. So but no, I think the main four we listed are good. Yeah, Superman's flight, Spidey sense, the Flash is super speed, and are we going with Hulk or are we going with Professor X? I think, I think, I think Hulk strength again. I think super strength is just more iconic, and Hulk is just more famous than Professor X, just because you know it's the Hulk. Like, come on, everyone. Yeah. Everyone knows the Hulk, even if you don't like superheroes, and everybody knows the Hulk is good at one thing. One thing only. Yeah. Indeed. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like that's that's a pretty solid list in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. All right. So, anything else do you want to bring your first guest before we sign off? I have nothing else to add. All right. So with that, we will see you all next time. Take care.